So I want to do an analysis of the very short run, the immobile factors model. And it's just, that's another way of saying that we're going to be looking at the impact on capital and labor, real income, standard of living, real returns, when labor and capital cannot move from X and labor and capital cannot move from Y. They're stuck in the industry where they're where they're uh, employed. So it's a kind of very short run analysis when, when machinery can't be easily transformed into the use in another sector or labor cannot be moved into another sector because of uh, not having the right skills or not enough time to move. And we're going to do this when the price of Y goes up for whatever reason and the price of X stays the same. So what we're talking about here is when the relative price of X goes down. The price of Y going up and the price of X staying the same is another way of saying that the relative price of X has fallen, or the relative price of Y has risen. All the same thing. And it doesn't matter why. The price of Y could be going up because it's an importing good and it's a tariff, or why is an exported good and a country is liberalized so it can now export more, whatever. And what I have here are the, are the two factor market conditions for capital and labor, where this part is capital in X is paying, being paid, it's the value of marginal product, the price of X times how much extra output you earn by hiring another unit capital, analogously for good Y, and for labor. The wage in X is equal to how much labor is valued based on the amount it produces and at the margin and the price of X, the same way for the wage in Y. And so we're starting with is a situation where labor and capital have no incentive to move back and forth. Capital earns the same in X and in Y. Labor earns the same in X as in Y. So you start out with this equilibrium, and we're going to allow the price of Y to rise, keeping the price of X the same. So let's depict that. Okay, price of X is staying the same and the price of Y goes up. Now let's think about the marginal productivities. Because labor and capital cannot move between sectors and you have a given technology, then the marginal productivities of labor and capital in both sectors stays the same. You can't move back and forth. You can't change the capital labor ratio. You can't change the productivity is not changing. And so what you see is that the, the real impetus for the changes has to do with the price of the goods. So let's start over here on industry X. So forget about this stuff on the right. The price of X is staying the same. The marginal productivity of capital is staying the same the nominal payment to capital next stays the same because there's nothing that determines it that has changed. The same way with the wage in X. Laborers are neither more productive, the price of the good that they produce doesn't change. Wage in X stays the same. So for capital owners and labor suppliers, no change in their nominal payment. Let's take a look over here at the at the Y sector. Again, forgetting what's over here on the left. Marginal productivity of capital hasn't changed, but the price of Y has gone up. So that's going to tend to bid up the value of having a unit of capital in that firm. They're more valuable. And if we've got perfect competition in the in the in the capital market, that's going to tend to bid the 
the payments to capital up by the same percentage as the price wise in Y. Wage, the same thing. The price of Y goes up. Workers in this sector are more valuable. Perfect competition drives the wage up by the full amount of the price change. Now let's combine these two results where nothing is changing over here in nominal terms and the payments to labor and capital and on this side are going up. What's happening to the real returns? That is to say the ability of labor and capital in the two sectors to buy stuff. Let's start with the easy one. Capital owners, workers in Industry X have the same income as they did before in dollar terms, in nominal terms. They can buy the same amount of X, but this payment goes less far in purchasing power because the price of Y has gone up. So workers and capital owners in the X sector in the sector where the relative price has gone down, those workers and capital owners get hurt. The real returns to labor and capital in X goes down as the relative price of X falls, or the relative price of Y goes up, either way you want to think about it. The real returns to capital and labor and why have exactly the opposite effects. They've seen a raise, capital owners and workers in, in sector Y. So they're getting paid more money. They can buy the same amount of Y, right? Because the labor, the payment to labor went up because the price of Y went up. So if this goes up by 10%, the wage goes up by 10%. They can buy the same amount of Y. But because they've had a raise and the price of X has stayed the same, they can buy more. They can Workers in Y can buy more of good X. So their standard of living is, has gone up. And the more they buy of X, the better off they are. Same way with capital. Capital's got a raise. A raise by the 10% of the, of the price rise in Y. That's why the payment to capital went up. They can buy the same amount of Y, but they can buy more of X whose price hadn't changed. So the real returns to capital and labor in Y goes up if we've got the relative price of Y rising. So to, to really summarize it back, back up from this, what you have in the very short run in mobile factors model is that your economic interests are intimately tied with the industry in which you're employed. The price of your good goes up, that is to say if the, the price of Y goes up, the, the, the impact on workers and capital owners in good Y is good. They can buy more. They can stretch their uh, their uh, their income further because they have received higher returns relative to the cost of the goods that they make. Exactly the opposite in the sector whose relative price has fallen. They get hurt. Labor and capital aligned on X in terms of their economic interest. Labor and capital aligned in good Y. And this is a very uh, broad and common theme. The more factors are tied to an industry, that is, in other words, they can't leave that industry, they're stuck, the more they're going to see their economic interests tied up with the, the price of the good that they're uh, in, in the industry where they're employed. They're going to fight together. Labor and capital are going to have the same interests, either in terms of supporting a price rise for, for workers in labor and, and industry Y, or opposing that price rise if you're in industry X.
the payments, uh, the uh, economic interests of labor and capital are aligned in the in the in this very 